ultimate goal is your board exam. So whatever you are studying for now is for your board exam. Welcome to Decoding Academic Success, the podcast that goes beyond books to give you secrets of academic excellence. I'm your host, Aram Bajur, and I'm here to give you tips, tricks, and secrets in how to achieve in your academics. So, get a notebook, a pen, and a highlighter if needed, because we are here to decode the secrets and mysteries of achievements. Let's get started. Hi, uh, welcome in Decoding Academic Success. Now we are Sanghi Pellavari. She's an academic genius in maths and all the subjects. She scored 96 percent in 10th year and she has been excellent ever since. Hi, get a real. So, uh, Sanghi, tell me how do you approach these mathematical concepts in so many topics? So, I think the best advice yeah. I could give you guys is to approach with a major mindset. I know this is a lot easier said than done, but if you solve the questions with a preconceived notion that, oh yeah, the question will be difficult or I won't be able to solve the question, then chances are you won't be able to solve it. So try to approach it more positively and yeah, you know, I can do this. I will be able to solve the questions and I believe with enough practice, you will be able to solve all the questions. And our ultimate goal right now is learning for the books. And so we have nine grade. 10th grade book. Essentially studying only for your 10th grade books. So that should be your main goal. And once you have that goal in focus, I believe it will become a lot easier to approach new concepts. Uh, that was amazing. So we yeah. we always find people telling us confidence in me. Telling yeah. me that I was really quick over. So uh, how do you manage your talent by solving the papers? How do you break the paper down into parts? Yeah. So basically now this usually comes with that. Yeah. So when you solve a lot of past papers, what happens is you sort of start to understand what topics require how much. Now there is no fixed formula that, oh yeah, vectors question will be of six marks, translation question will be of three marks. But when you still solve the papers and sort of get an idea how much time each question or a concept requires, which will help you allocate that time. Now, a way of when you're practicing is to write your start time and your end time. And then you sort of, once you're done with the paper and once you check the paper, you go through what questions took more time and what questions you need to work. This will make it easier for you when you're actually solving the paper and the work. So you don't fumble with the time. Right. So you know, all not written on the maths, you just keep telling us of taking these past papers. Yeah. And you know when we first see math class paper on the internet, yeah. you find so many links and so many websites. So this one could be choose and out of these many past papers, how do we find the question we need and how do we solve this question? Yeah. So you can find math past papers anywhere on the websites. There are multiple websites. I if you want to go into topic and questions, then I believe Save My Exam is a very good website yeah. because you sort of also be able to choose the difficulty. So suppose you just, you just practice, you're just, you know, not studying history seriously like that, you can solve easy questions. Yeah. But if you really want to test the concepts, you can do the hard questions. Right. So save my exams and give you the opportunity to do that. But if you're solving an entire paper, then I recommend solving um, 19 to 2018 and the years before that. Because from 2020 to 2022, the papers become a little easier during COVID-19. So once you solve the difficult papers, it will become easier for you to solve the current papers as well. So you know our teachers keep telling us that we take papers from four years before. I yeah. think starting from 2020 to 2026. Yeah. So how true is it? I mean, yes. So ideally what happened is due to COVID-19, we are online school. Yeah. So the papers during those times became slightly easier. So if you solve those papers only and then you go to the boards, right now the standard has been increased again. So when I get the board exams, my math paper was more difficult than the paper which was there in 2020, 2021 and 2022. So if you solve those questions only, it might make it a little more difficult for you during the board exams because you would have been expecting easier questions. So I would say solve those questions, but if you really want to test yourself to make sure yeah, I will be good in the boards, you have to also solve papers before those. Right. So, you know, uh, we get this many tricky questions and how do we like think out of the box 
So suppose you get a question where you have to imagine a diagram or something. Correct. So how do you think out of the box or the stressful labels you are giving on this kind of thing? Correct. So if you consider maths as a very mathematical subject, right? And especially in ICCSD, you are awarded maths for writing certain steps. Right. So you don't want to lose out on that brain which you like. Yeah. Now I would say an out of the box approach would be special questions that you have to visualize, right? right. Try to imagine it like in front of you. So once you can visualize the best you can, that will make it a lot easier for you to solve the questions. But then there are also topics like vectors, uh, men, non men's vision, sorry, graphs. Which you can't really visualize, right? I mean, you can't visualize a piece of paper, yeah, uh, which will make it difficult for you. Right. So for that, like you have to understand multiple different methods of solving that question, which will make it easier for you to solve it in the future. Right. So can you tell us how do we get these formulas? Because you get say ten sheets of formulas okay. for the boards, and how do we uh, memorize them so okay. that we don't forget them while the presentation? Okay. Correct. So I believe yes, obviously it's a very important to uh, by heart the formulas because without the formulas we won't know what to imply, what information to apply, right? So you need to remember these formulas. But I think the first thing you need to do is once you get the sheet of formula, you need to bifurcate the formulas into a topic. So you need to know, suppose you're finding the volume of an object, right? You need to know that the formula for the volume of the object is in mensuration and not in graphs. Once you sort of figure out the bifurcation of these formulas, will make it easier. So one day you don't have to learn all the formulas. So you're taking graphs today, you only learn the formulas of the graphs today, and then you remember. And also what I used to do was I used to write all the formulas down in a sheet of paper, and I used to refer to it before data. I know that sounds tedious, but what I used to do to make it a little more interesting for me, is I used to listen to music, which would make it a lot more interesting for me to like yeah. write the formulas, which will make me actually want to write the formula. And I hope that will help you guys. So tell me, uh, you've been able to do so many papers and you have so many steps done. So tell me, what is this one mistake that you and people generally make in these papers that you would like to tell? So that we don't get in it. So I believe the main mistake I made during class with the subject is not reading the question correctly. So what happens is you read a, because it's a difficult question, right? And you read the question. But you only read half of it and you sort of omit some interpretation. Right. Now you, you will find it difficult, right? Because it's just like, okay, wait, this information has been presented. But I don't have adequate information to find out what I need to find out. It yeah. will also send you in a spiral, which will also affect your performance in other questions which you might have been able to done in right. here, right? So what you need to do is you need to underline all the information and you need to label. Once information has been pre presented to you, right, you know, methodically, you'll be able to figure out what information you have and what information you need to find out using what is given. So going to the last question, tell me how do I and all of these students yeah. listen, give themselves motivated during this question because math is a very easy subject. Correct. And you know we sometimes feel very tired and exhausted when it is a subject. Correct. So how do you keep us motivated to keep on going to the club? Correct. So I think the best thing you have to do is to keep your goal in mind, right? Correct. Right. Right. Now you are in ninth place and you move forward to the left. So all your formatives, uh, your summatives, your prelims are all very important because they are all practice to your goal. But your ultimate goal is your board exam. So whatever you're studying for now is for your board exam. So anything that you do right now, you're supposed to go forward with the mindset, okay, whatever I'm studying right now is for my board exam. And you want to do the best you can for your board exam. Right? Right. So for that, once you have that goal in your mind, you think, okay, I'm studying for my board exam, it does make it a lot clearer what you need to do and what you need to do. And you need to sort of understand what topics are weaker on. So once you identify that, it will make it a lot easier for you to figure out where you need to work on and that will also like sort of change your approach to math. Right. So thank you so much for coming here and it is an amazing time that I had. We hope all these listeners benefit from this. So just for like ending it, could you give us like a 30 second summary for the test that you did? Correct. So I believe the best that we can do is to approach it with more little mindset, have an open mind while solving your math papers, 
then underline all the information which is required and mark it. Okay, and then you figure out what you have to solve. And suppose you're in the you're in the question, like you're solving the questions you are in the exam, yeah. and you cannot, you're not able to solve a certain questions. Don't panic. I know it's very daunting when you're like, okay, yeah, the clock is ticking and I only have a certain amount of time yeah. to finish the paper. Don't panic. Take a deep breath and solve the next question. Just ignore that question. Chances are, if you come back, you find out some information you missed, and then you'll be able to solve it better than you could have in that sort of spiraling. Right. All right. Thank you so much for coming here. Thank you. Thank you. It was a wonderful opportunity.